Okay. So high level, when we start our relationship with coaches that we're working with or organizations that are running different types of programs, uh, we see one of two scenarios as the starting point. Either um, we have this primary offering that is sort of a fixed length program. Uh, we could call this the program model if you want to. Um, say it's a eight week program. It has a fixed cost. It's paid up front. Um, and it's kind of a high ticket item. So the benefit of a structure like that, where it's sort of a program model, for, or for example, the challenge model that was that was uh, shared just a minute ago, is the, it gives you a clean opportunity to collect that revenue up front without creating a complicated conversation for you and your, your clients, right? Um, you can be very clear about what they're getting, what they can expect, and say, the value is this, we'll just collect this up front and we'll start the relationship. Um, that's incredibly beneficial for a lot of, a lot of, especially coaching businesses, especially early on who don't have maybe some outside funding source or, or a lot of, of cash in the bank. Um, the benefit there is that you start collecting money upfront and you can start kind of reinvesting that, um, as you're, you know, starting the coaching relationship, reinvesting that in additional things to keep more people coming in, like marketing, things like that. Great way to get started. However, there's a clear limitation to that um, that I hope is kind of clear to you all, but I'll talk through it just to make sure it is clear. Let's say I have just for, for the sake of some round numbers, let's say I have a three month long program. Um, it's a thousand dollars. You pay for it up front. It's some great transformation that people are signing up for uh, attached to this, of course. Um, so I'm doing an okay job of that. I'm getting people uh, consistently to sign for a thousand dollars. Now, let me share a statistic with you that might start to show where the, the flaw or the fly is in the ointment here. Um, depending on what research you trust um, or where you get your information from. So actually Harvard Business Review, I usually cite them, did a um, did a bit of a study on all of the all of the sort of collective as kind of an overview of all the studies of, of how much it costs to acquire a new client. Um, the difference between how much it costs to acquire a new client versus how much it costs to upsell or resell an existing client that you've already sold. And almost no matter what you read, the difference is staggering. It's anywhere from about five times more expensive to sell it, to acquire a new client than to resell an, an existing one up to, all the way up to, I've seen studies that say it's 25 times more expensive to acquire a new client than to resell an existing one. Mm -hmm. And the reason is obvious, especially for coaches and coaching programs and relationships like this. You've spent so much time earning that person's trust. They've got new experience that they've had a good experience. They are ready to continue working with you. If you only have that initial program model in place, then there's a very good chance you're leaving a lot of opportunity on the table. Now, since we've had the comments open and we've had some good chat so far, um, it sounds like some of you have already made this excellent connection that there's also another opportunity there, which is the more of a membership structure. And I will say we do have um, a good chunk of the coaches that we work with or organizations that we work with kind of come in the door with just a membership offering. It's like a community-based, like a coach-led community membership type program that they have. And those are typically structured when we when we come across them as a low lowish monthly membership fee that's just ongoing recurring. Um, let's talk about the strengths and weaknesses of that just for your survival as a business. If you are doing a good job retaining those clients, if you're using a platform like Nudge Coach, you ought to be. Um, that's a part of the big, big value of, of using a system like this where you're able to engage ongoing. But if you're doing a good job retaining those clients, you've created the opportunity for an incredible recurring revenue base, which serves as, as you grow, the baseline for your revenue month to month, right? And especially in the early days, that kind of baseline of revenue can take a lot of stress off your life and your business. Let's say you're a coach who's really been doing a good job kind of growing, growing the business over time, but you've had this program model. So you're just getting more, a few more people each month in the door with the program model. It goes from five, so you're getting five grand a month to maybe you know, finding a way to eke out six and then seven and eight. And you get into a place where, okay, I might be able to pull in 10 grand a month, but I am never taking a vacation. 
<laughs> that's basically the lifestyle you've signed up for if you don't have a work recurring revenue model underneath that. Membership model by itself, it takes a long time and some investment to be able to just start with just that membership model and eventually get up to the point where you're covering your costs every month. Because if you think about it, let's say I'm offering a, a low cost membership for $40 a month. How many clients do I need before I start to make enough money, have a high enough baseline for me to cover whatever my costs are, um, along with the, let's say the, the income that I want to have, uh, just me individually, it's going to take a little while. Um, so that's something that you need to consider for sure. Now, if you are having success retaining people, the benefit of a membership model is it's also open-ended, right? So let's say I have a hundred people on my $40 a month membership that's starting to get pretty interesting, right? A hundred people times 40, 4,000 a month. That's my baseline revenue, right? Mm -hmm. Baseline revenue. I know I'm at least going to make four grand a month. If I'm doing a good job retaining clients, then I actually could take a vacation and still have that four, $4,000 coming in the door. So what I often have to have is a common, a conversation with coaches or organizations that are coming in the door that goes a little something like this. How can we leverage the benefits of collecting some upfront cash to reinvest in what we're doing with the benefits of having this baseline of revenue month after month after month that makes my business really sustainable and can pretend, potentially provide me with the kind of lifestyle that I actually want to live as a human being with maybe a family or something like that. Um, and you know, we, we can come up with a fancy term for that. We call it program stacking, but having at least these two offerings where there's something that's collected up front with high, high ticket price, um, to make sure that you're able to collect some cash, reinvest that in your marketing and some type of continuity revenue, continent, continuity program. This could be a membership program. It could be a maintenance program after someone specifically designed for after someone finishes your high ticket program. Um, this could be kind of a, a light accountability program tied to a community or something like that. There are different ways of framing it and setting it up, but the combination of the high ticket offering and the ongoing membership gives you the best opportunity in our, in our eyes, that framework for creating yourself a sustainable business that you can both, both uh, have some sanity living within and <laughs> working in month to month and expect to collect some decent revenue along the way. Is that making sense so far? Mm -hmm. We're good. Um, I saw, I, I, you know, in the comments, it sounded like a couple of you are already doing this. So, so we are kind of preaching to the choir a little bit today, it sounds like. Um, but I hope this is also kind of creating some aha moments for a few of you as well as we go along. Now, where this continues uh, to potentially advance is as you can continue to grow, you know, what does that customer journey look like? Are we aligned in terms of how we're promoting things across the board so that it makes sense to go from, for example, um, and you have a clear plan for going from, for example, your high-end program to your membership model? Um, or your or your maintenance model, whatever you want to call it, or vice versa. Sometimes, sometimes you can can draw people into something that's a little bit lighter weight um, as an init initial like a lightweight taster. Like here's a sample of the type of programming you'll get with us, and then be able to upsell. That's a similar thing that you can see as well. But the reason I don't typically present it in that direction, as in a, a lighter weight starting point, and then up to the the uh, higher tier program model is just because I don't want you guys to forget that we need something in place that's monthly after the program model, right? To, to keep more of those people on board. Again, if it's somewhere between five times to 25 times easier to make that sale, to keep somebody on than to bring on a new person, then you really wanna take up every single opportunity you can afford to in terms of extending the lifetime value of those clients. Lifetime value is basically a business term. Uh, it comes from most often you'll hear it from the software as, as a service world, uh, but it basically means the the entire amount that a, a client is going to spend with you throughout the course of the entire relationship. 
if you just have a program that's a thousand dollars and nothing, you're offering nothing, nothing after that, there's no what's next after that, then the maximum lifetime value you can ever have is a thousand dollars. And you have to know that you have to then know that it costs you well less than a thousand dollars to acquire a client. Um, because on top of that, you're going to need to make your own money and all that stuff, pay yourself out, pay anyone else out that you're working with. So these are all the high level kind of costs and considerations we have to think about when we're structuring a model. Um, now you can make uh, the, the inverse work. So you can make the, there's no reason that if you're ready for it and you have the bandwidth to create enough programming, uh, you can't do the kind of low cost leading into, um, leading into a program model. That's just as simple as being able to do the math on the spreadsheet to make sure that you're able to convert enough clients. Um, it is something that is actually a pretty good use of the existing nudge platform structure. It's especially easy if you have a white label um, because there are some unique things that we can do there. But what you need to do, to do if that's something that you're interested in is take a close look at, okay, how much am I going to be earning from these people in this sort of test phase, this lightweight introductory phase? Say it was like a 30-day trial challenge for 15 bucks or something like that. I'm just throwing around random numbers. Um, you need to get a good sense of the conversion rate that you can achieve or, and set yourself up for as high a conversion rate as possible from that lightweight initial step into the high tier program, if that makes sense. So if, if you run that and you can get the sense that you're going to be able to convert people at, you know, 30% of the people that get into the trial are going to go to the, to the high end program, then you've probably got a pretty good model on your hands um, and you're going to be able to, to make that work. If the conversion rate is really low, you might need to adjust some things and make sure that there's really good alignment between what you're offering in the trial program and what you're offering at the full program level. So for example, if I had, let's say, a intensive program focused on, um, it's a, let's say it's a fitness program that, that I do. Um, the goal is weight loss. Um, that's why people are, are signing up for my high-end programming. Um, it's a kind of personalized weight loss program designed to make sure that you can still love food while you are going through it. All that good stuff. You guys, you guys know this kind of stuff. So, um, I need to be careful with any kind of trial programming that I offer it to make sure it very clearly aligns with what that next step is. Otherwise my conversion rate from the trial programming to the higher tier paid programming is going to be lower. Um, so for example, you could see something like a, like a fun one month steps challenge actually being fairly aligned with that. Um, in that at least it's focused in the right areas, generally speaking. Movement, you can connect that with, okay, this is a, a weight loss program. Um, but you wanna make sure you augment that as much as you can to say, you know, steps challenge aligned to your weight loss goals in 2022. Um, and, you know, be clear about what you're, what you're building up towards. During the course of that trial programming, you have to be careful to make sure that you have structured in place multiple calls to action. So people both know that it's coming, that you're going to be offering that higher tier. And then they get an opportunity to sign up like right in the right time when it's highly relevant to them. Like the challenge is coming to an end. Hey guys, I don't know if you've noticed so far, but some of these people that are doing really well in this challenge actually already work with me personally in this program. That's the kind of half halfway point message. Those are the people that are crushing it. Um, and then at the end, hey, remember how the people who are crushing this program early on are the ones that are working with me more directly? You can work with me directly too. Here's how. And there's the upsell um, throughout the course of that trial programming. So we typically at least want that uh, upsell opportunity mentioned halfway through and then pretty regularly at the end to make sure there's a clear call to action and way for them to upsell in the higher programming. With that in place, you create a pretty sustainable model. Another place that you can look, say, if you're saying, hey, Phil, you know, that sounds well and good. I'm not comfortable with the amount of content I have yet to be able to sustain like an ongoing membership. Where would you start in terms of I just have this one program I'm offering? Well, the very first thing that you can do today is plan for a time on the, in the latter half of that programming that you're offering right now. Uh, say it's an eight-week programming, week, week. Uh, eight week program somewhere in the like week six to week eight range have touch points with 
some of the clients that may not have have been as engaged as you would like to have, them to have been or had stuff that come up. This is always something that gets communicated at some point during these programs. Um, and try to get on a call with them and, and circle back with them around. Hey, you know, I, I don't think you got everything that you could have out of this go around. Um, what would your interest be in, in going through this again? And we can give this another shot and give it a real try and basically reselling the existing program um, to make sure we give them another shot. And we've learned a little bit more about how we can help guide them the second time around um, to make sure that they get the success that they're looking for. That would be a first step is to start exploring that conversation with some of those clients. What that is still leaving on, on the table though for you is those that are most primed to continue with you or those that have the best experience. Right. So um, be sure to put in the time to, to consider um, that ongoing kind of maintenance style programming. Typically that's the quickest that you can spin up is something that's framed as either a maintenance program or an accountability program. Here's why that's valuable. One, those people already trust you. You could tell them almost anything and they would be like, well, yeah, I really want to maintain what I've done here. Like I've really gotten this transformation out of this experience. I totally trust you. Of course, it's a no brainer to pay you $30 a month or whatever it may be to continue kind of keeping an eye on me to make sure that you retain the progress that you've made up uh, so far. We don't want people to revert immediately back to their old lives. Um, the cases that you always hear this in is, is dieting, right? The yo-yo dieting thing. Um, but it's it's the case for any type of coaching. Basically, anything you're coaching someone on, they're living a certain way. They want to be living another way. They get to that point at the end, but they could very easily revert back if we are not careful and don't have the right infrastructure in place. Um, and that's the value of a light accountability programming uh, a program. The benefit there to you is... If it's framed as an accountability program or a maintenance program, something lightweight, the burden is not high on you to create like a bunch of fancy content to kind of automatically drip out, for example, through nudge. Um, that's probably not as much the expectation. Yeah, you want to make sure there continues to be some, some reminder type material, some lightweight material to keep people um, aware of the reason that they're living the way that they are now, um, the change that they've made, the value of that change in their lives. And, you know, you could schedule out regular touch points in the system, whether it's messages or whatever to say, yeah, uh, things like, Hey, let's make sure that we keep this progress up. What's the, what's the baseline that we want to stay above with X or Y or Z make sure those regular touch points are in place because really all that person needs to know a lot of the time when they're, when they're um, signing up for an accountability or maintenance program is that someone who cares is paying attention and mm -hmm. has their back. Um, it is not rocket science. So you don't want to over promise with the framing of your maintenance or accountability program, but you can usually spin those up without an incredible amount of thought. And it is more than worth your consideration when it comes around to it. Um, I see a lot of cases where coaches who are having success with the clients they're working with will have a 50% conversion rate on that, a 70% conversion rate on that, on offering some continuity programming of some kind once they get in the rhythm of actually having that conversation. Really high numbers. And, and when you actually start breaking down you know, your business from a financial perspective, that is game changing if you know that 50% of the clients that you're working with in your program model are going to continue with you on a monthly basis, that means you're just starting to build and build and build that baseline for your revenue every month. And every additional person you sign up for that high-end program is just adding to the baseline that you already have. Um, so it changes, it can, it, it, this structure, the combination of those things, thinking through it in the right way and creating a fully aligned from your marketing all the way through the execution of the whole thing, um, this can really change the way you live and coach and, and think about your business and eventually lead to even some opportunities where you're earning more. I never like to call anything passive income. I think it's kind of bullshit, to be honest with you. Um, it exists. You, there are means of, of quote, passive income, but you know, I think the way that we all like to work with people, we don't like, I, I just... I just don't, I don't, I don't like the way it feels. Um, like and I don't think you guys could be entirely passive. In yeah. This and it shouldn't be because you're just stealing from people if it's passive <laughs> income, right? <laughs> and you want to continue to be engaged, but 
you can build out a system where you are providing great value to people just by keeping them simply accountable because they've gotten great results with you already. And it's more than worth it to them to pay for that on, a, on an ongoing basis. It's incredibly valuable to their lives to make sure they retain everything that they've gotten out of that program, right? The, the actual value on that is massive. It's way more than what you'd be charging them. So you should never feel guilty about any offering like that where you're continuing to keep people on track. Um, it, it's a game changer for them. It's a game changer for you though, because you're creating that that base, that solid foundation for ongoing revenue um, that I'm not going to call passive income, but it's <laughs> lighter weight income for you. It's, it's, Over touch. yeah, absolutely. It is, uh, it's, um, you know, peace of mind. It's, it's the ability to live a lifestyle that you want to live while you're working the way that you want to work and really still impacting lives. It can do a lot for you as you grow. Um, and I can, you know, from some experience, I can tell you from our structure, right? We have an ongoing recurring revenue model with everything we do. Um, that's not by accident. That gives us a high baseline of revenue so that we can reinvest in, in other areas and continue to grow fast. Like the ongoing education that we do, we can now afford to spend an extra half hour every week to do office hours like this right. um, and just talk with you guys about topics that are interesting to, to each of us. Um, you know, these are the kinds of extra things that you can also use to reinvest in your business and create further um, differentiation and experiences that no one else can compete with. And that's that's when it really starts to get fun as well. So it doesn't have to be passive. You don't have to go sit in the sun in Costa Rica if you get bored. Um, you can pour yourself back in in other ways. Um, so I hope that all makes sense. If you guys have any questions, um, feel free to fire away now or circle back with us afterwards. I'm just Phil at Nudge Coach. Catherine is Catherine at Nudge Coach. Um, we're here for you guys and um, love to, you know, explore models with you guys in the future. We certainly have a deeper catalog of business structures that we've seen, <laughs> which can be a little fun to go through. Um, but, you know, these are the, the primary kind of learning points and learnings that, you know, I think are the most valuable to carry forward. Um, and it's important that it's not rocket science. Almost everything that you learn in life that's really valuable should just feel like, oh uh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, the hard part is just living it out, right? Um, so that's it for today. Um, again, if you have any questions, get in touch. We have, do we have some minor updates coming out this week, Catherine, to the platform? Um, I think next week PDFs. I don't want to jinx it, but okay. uh, we had yep. that coming on the pike. There you go. Uh, so PDFs and cards, look out for that. The ability to attach them right in there. Client will be able to open it, um, either read it, obviously, or they could email it to themselves. Those are the built-in okay. features when you open a PDF right in a, on a mobile app or on a phone. So uh, that'll be in place in the very near future. Um, a lot of other things in the hopper, though, for the rest of this year and early next year. So looking forward to moving that forward as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thanks, right, Bill. I learned something. <laughs> cool, cool. That's always a good sign because Catherine's <laughs> smarter than me. Um, okay, guys. Well, we'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. Okay. Thanks, everyone. See ya.